So we gotta clean this one, paint it, and then get all these little bits into this one. But here we go. Hey guys, Dulos here. Welcome back to the RAM conversion series. I'm taking uh, the center console of my RAM and putting in uh, a jump seat with the column shifter. So changing it from that floor shifter to the column shifter, putting another seat. Usually guys do it in the reverse, so you can certainly look at the series and watch in reverse and all the stuff you're gonna need. Uh, but I need the extra seat, and I wasn't the biggest fan of that center console anyway, uh, so it's nice to have it. Uh, this will work for 1500, 2500, 3500. The interior of the cab is basically the same. Might be some wiring differences or a different transmission, so check. Uh, your VIN number for the right parts, but I've got a list of parts uh, below uh, that you're gonna need uh, for probably, you know, all the, all these conversions. So in this one, I'm putting the, all the center dash pieces on, doing some cutting and trimming to get different pieces to fit. Uh, it's really gonna depend on your trim level. If you had a lower trim level truck, like a base model truck, it would just be swap and go. I had the 120 volt plug that I need to get to fit in the lower uh, trim piece that I picked up. You might be able to find one that's got all the right pieces, but the part I got from the junkyard had to be modified a little bit. But it really turned out to not be that big a deal, as we'll see in this video. All right, so this one's cleaned up. Got all the parts out. Got all the parts out of this one. I'm gonna sand this one up a little bit. There's some kind of scuffs, and not gonna be a big deal if I put down some primer, some filling primer. And uh, but just don't want the hard edge. Um, the only issue I see is that this one has the port for the 12 volt, and I have 12 volt obviously because that's the one from the truck. But this piece, I didn't realize, is part of the molding, and it looks like this whole front part is the molded part, and then it's sort of welded in so even if I got this out and you know was able to melt it back on it has this extra hook at the bottom uh, so I'm hoping that I can just get the new one to fit in there and uh, bolt in because there is a, a bolt for it so hopefully that'll be strong enough um, if not um, I might be able to modify the pocket that's in this one so we'll see how that goes. So I did a little sanding on this and uh, I was gonna try and get these out but there's some sort of texture up here but a little bit of sanding took it off so I might do a little more sanding on here just trying to even out this texture but got out some of these scratches. I was just using 600 grit just what I grabbed out of the box and it was fine. So it's nice and smooth. Primer should fill that in and then uh, Probably redo here a little bit too, and then redo this a little bit more. So hopefully you get a nice flat coat. So I got three coats of the primer on there. It's a little cold, but it's doing fine, I think. And now I'm gonna do this. This this actually worked good. The semi gloss black. It had a, a little bit of a shine to it, but it wasn't glossy and it wasn't flat. So that's what semi-gloss is. So we'll see uh, how this goes. So got it painted up. Got the vents and the controls back in. It's definitely a little dusty. So that's all it is. It's a little light down here. It's hard to spray the bottom. I didn't want to sprayed again and cause any striping and you know really can see it so you know just the truck uh but the controls are in paint looks pretty good for a quick rattle can job and the issue is on this guy for the standard power i mean i don't use it but one day i might um this frame is different and this whole side piece is kind of pressed in um, and that's sort of the problem so my thought is is that if I cut this part out it doesn't necessarily need to stick to here although I suppose I could super glue it but if I can cut this out around here if I can cut this out around here I'm hoping 
but I can still press this in and then screw it into the bracket on the dash and then put the this big fascia in front and then put this guy over it and that it'll still work because um, that was still clipping there so I mean at this point the truck is switched and this will probably even just fit in there but so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get an exacto and try and cut that out of there. I push that in all the way. And the other thing is these these guys from the radio with all this hot glue, we got to get the hot glue off. But uh, try and get them in here. And uh, let me see if maybe if I can just super glue it now that I have super glue. So I didn't have a cutoff wheel. I had some like fine points, like grinding points that definitely melted the plastic. But I sanded a little bit. And I'm going to cut this edge off with the X-Acto. And we'll see if it fits. See what kind of trimming I have to do. And then hopefully super glue it. But I might need to get some uh, some plastic weld stuff. So we'll see. So I sanded it down even further. So there's not much of a ledge on it. Just wanted a flat surface. You know, for gluing. And then I took a little bit out. Probably should have done this before I painted it. But I took a little bit out of the top up there. And around the bottom, and hopefully that's enough. I'm gonna peel that off. So it looks like we're in business up top. Just the bottom could be filed down a little bit more for a little more room, so I'm gonna try that out. So reminder, guys, do this stuff before you paint. But uh, see, I gotta clean up the paint a little bit right there. I think I'll just use a Sharpie or something. Uh, but I gotta sand it down, and it fits good. And I'm not even sure that I'm going to super glue it because the back screws to that panel and the front snaps on it might be good to have a little bit of leeway when putting the panel on so um i find it to be loose i can always do that but i think we're going to be square like this so i'm just going to wipe it down and clean up the paint and uh we'll be in business <laughs> All right, so I did a quick look and there's not another harness over here. My assumption is that the 12 volt, maybe you can't get when you have over here. So this 120 volt would have been, uh, would have been what they use for over here for just a regular um, 12 volt outlet. So what I did was I took the battery 12 volt out of here, it was a big ugly one. And I took the 12 volt that was in the center console and I replaced it here. And since there's none, and I'm gonna be splicing anyway, I'm just gonna run um, in series lines over to here to plug into this guy. Center's positive and outside is negative. And then I'm also gonna run in the dash cam uh, that was originally plugged in down here anyway. I'm gonna wire that up and we'll get back to it. So I've got it wired up. I've got two splices in here. Hopefully they're good. And then I've got that hooked up to the camera. So I've got two splices in here, hooked up to the camera, and then I spliced them again uh, to here. So it's basically it's kind of it's basically series. So now the test is, will these still work? So I'm actually going to plug this back in, and we'll see. We'll know if the camera has power because it'll turn on when I go to turn this on. Yeah, camera's got power. So now I'm gonna put in, where do I do with it? Your camera's got power too. So I can't do it with the phone on, so I'm <laughs> recording anyway. So I'm gonna plug the phone in and see if both 12 volts have power. Well, that's a success. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, actually, so that's a success. Now if I showed you, I made sure both of these have the key on them. The left side was always the key, driver's side was key, and the right side was battery, but now I show both key. Now I'm just gonna go through the radio and then uh, make sure that it's all wired fine and nothing loose and bad. And, uh, cause it's kind of in jumpy with the mute switch, so I think it's something with the phone or the, configuration and then uh, we'll put these panels back on I'll leave a spot for the USB 
and then I've got the ODB2, and then this should be uh, video in uh, for when, uh, if I ever mount another camera back there. Actually, for the trailer, because the trailer's got a rear view camera. I'm running out of daylight here, but item 121 on today's glitch list is that these guys are in here for the console, and they need to be up here for uh, this this guy. Thankfully, I think this guy's gonna screw in fine. The big bucket, but I need to see if I can move these up here on both sides. I got them out fine. I just actually stuck the pliers in here and pried, and they popped out and popped back in. So I'm gonna go grab the other hardware, and we'll try mounting this stuff up. And these are all seven millimeter. Cup holders in. Cup holder goes first. Bolts here and here, and then these guys go on top, and they have. This bolt goes on. Uh, there needs to be another one on the bottom, but I don't have those brackets. But they seem to be pretty sturdy without it. And then this guy kind of goes along the bottom here, and that'll snap in. Um, I'm just going to try and route some of these wires back there. Uh, this is the ODB2 for my radio, but it doesn't really pull any data. <laughs> So, it is what it is. Um, USB and video, these are the ones I really care about. I'm going to see if I can just kind of tuck them all open this up and see what it looks like back there. Okay, take two. I was using the wrong bolts. I was using the brass ones they were stripping, and I switched to these guys that uh, came with this from the junkyard. <clears throat> There's a wire in there. It's interesting. It's interesting you access that through there. Um... All right, it fits pretty snugly. I just want to make sure that these wires are tucked in there. I'm going to leave the OD. Actually, that's actually fine. Um, there's this middle like cover plate hinge that goes between the cup holder and here. And if I can get in there to access those wires if I need them, it won't be golden. So I'm going to tuck these back, get this up there, and then get the other cup holder insert. All right, got all the panels in. Obviously a little dirty. I'm going to try and get some plastic renew or something to get on here and clean that up. These open up. I'm going to have to I'm gonna wipe all these. Clean them all again. It's in there. So now I'm just going to go get the top guy. Front controls and connect it all up. Alright, it's all hooked up. It looks better in person than it does on camera with the lighting. So we've got the cup holders. I'm to put the one in there, clean it out a little bit, but the cup holders are in. Power outlets are good. That one comes off a little bit, I think. Yeah, because that was the one from the back, so it comes off a little bit. Paint job's not half bad for rattle can. Not half bad. Uh, hopefully the radio's working now, because I didn't notice anything loose. Controls all work. Cup holders are in, power outlets, got the 120 volt in there, nice and solid, that worked out good, and uh, that's that. I should have done it before and after, um, and it definitely looks more gray contrasted in on the camera, it doesn't person, but this mother's back to black did wonders for this trim. Um, I mean, it, it definitely looks way more gray in the camera than it does in person um and i'll probably still have to do a second uh treatment uh maybe in a couple days once it soaks in a little bit so this is the mother's back to black stuff i use got cheap at walmart um i thought it would be tinted but it's actually kind of looks like suntan lotion or something it's like white kind of this pasty white uh gel and then you rub it on with one and wipe it off with another little wax on wax off but because this thing was heinous absolutely heinous and even Windex just left it looking like this pale gray. So it looks way better. I did the shift knob. Uh, I'm going to turn the flash off to see if that helps. I'm hoping I can roll in the other clips, but it just looks so much better. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I mean, obviously it's got age and wear on it, but I'm so pleased in the way it came out. And uh, I'm going to see if we can get the seat in. Uh, the harness on the seat is definitely different. Um, I may have to re-splice this stuff and see how this, that's what I, th what I think 
so I haven't looked under here yet. I think the harness, this little extension, is going to have to be the one that's uh, on the seat, and I'll have to re-splice in uh, this guy. Uh, but let me see how that goes. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped uh, you on your conversion project, and maybe you just watched it for fun. Uh, but if you like what you saw, please subscribe, hit the like button, comment. Uh, let me know how it's going for you. If you have any questions, anything like that, and hopefully I'll be able to answer. Uh, but again, check the description below for details, uh, links, parts, things of that nature. Uh, may God bless you and keep standing up for what's right.